How's it going my tacticians? Welcome back to another video from yours truly and today I'm gonna be talking about four abilities and just certain abilities in general that just don't have any competitive viability and just just overall suck when you think about it. Like why why would people even run some of these abilities? I mean like some like one of them I'm gonna be talking about is you know a decent ability but when you think about it you know, think about it in a but in a re, in a in a in a somewhat competitive setting. It just doesn't have any. It's just it's just not a very good ability when you think about it. Now, you're probably wondering why I'm talking about this when I'm staring at a rapidash. In in, in fact, particularly a rapidash that is you know doing some doing flicking animations with its horn and its and its mane. Well, the reason why I'm talking about this is because rapidash is one of my favorite Pokemon. Both its Cantonian and Galarian form, I love Rapidash, and I love trying to, you know, trying to find ways to make it work. But, like, there's only two abilities that are, you know, somewhat good on Rapidash. One is its Cantonian form, and that is like a flame body. And on its Galarian form, its ability Pastel Veil. The flame body will make it so that if anyone, you know... If anyone tries to touch Rapidash, it has a very good chance of being burned. And Pastel Veil prevents the opponent from poisoning my team. Which is good if you're trying to counter Toxic Stallers. But I haven't run into any Toxic Stallers. It has been a very long time since I've seen Toxic Stalling. And that's because, you know, they, they finally removed Toxic as a TM, a TR. It doesn't matter. I mean, hopefully it doesn't make a comeback. I seriously hope it does not come back in, you know, in the in the next uh, patches, etc. But the point is, Rapidash and other Pokemon have these useless abilities that just don't make any sense. I mean, on paper they sound good, but when you think about it, they just don't work. They just don't work. Now, all right, let's get into the let's finally get into the meat of this. Let's let's stop looking at Galarian Rapidash, despite how fabulous it looks. Let's actually get into the meat of the video of what I want. To all right, so here we are once again talking about Rapidash. We're back on the Rapidash, like I said, mostly, more likely Cantonian Rapidash, and then moving on to Galarian Rapidash. Like I said before, Rapidash, Cantonian Rapidash, has a really decent ab ability, decent set of abilities. Runaway lets you know get away from certain situations, especially in you know in terms of a, like a, a competitive battle. It has that niche role of being able to switch out. Even if the opponent has an ability like Arena Trap or Shadow Tag, I believe Shadow Tag will also not stop a Pokemon with Runaway. So that's a decent enough uh, niche for Runaway. Flash Fire, you know, lets you absorb a fire attack and it boosts your own fire attack. So, you know, kind of decent ability. Flame Body, though, is Cantonian Rapidash's best ability in terms of competitive, simply because if the opponent tries to, like, say, fake you out or something, or tries to touch you, they're gonna get burned. And if a Pokemon is a physical attacker and it's gonna make physical contact, it's it's not gonna want to want to be burned. It doesn't want to be burned. So that's Cantonian Rapidash's, you know, signature strength. Galarian Rapidash, however... Well, Pastel Veil is a good ability for, to prevent being poisoned. I love not being toxic to again anymore. Anticipation is what steers me away from the hidden ability and focus entirely on Pastel Veil, simply because that is Rap Galarian Rapidash's signature ability and its by far best ability. Because if you were to go over to Anticipation, yeah, it's just a it's just a sucky ability. It just it's just bad. It's just straight up bad. A Pokemon with Anticipation will shudder upon entering battle if an opponent has a move that's super effective or one hit KO move like Fissure, Horn Drill, Guillotine, Sheer Cold, etc. And it only activates when the ability bearer switches in, not if an opponent switches in. It's a bad ability. Just straight up useless, especially in a competitive setting. 
you're gonna have a a decent enough chance, like a 60 to 70% chance that the opponent's Pokemon is gonna have a super effective move, especially if it's like an all out attacker type of Pokemon that uses multiple types of attacks. It's gonna have a super effective hit on you. It's just gonna, your opponent is just gonna have some way to hit you with a super effective hit. And a lot of Pokemon that do get it, you know, it, it's a de it's it's not a decent ability. It's it, the, like there are a dozen different abilities that are alternate choices. Like for example, Ferrothorn. Iron Barbs is always gonna be better than Anticipation. Eevee. If you're gonna run an Eevee, Adaptability. Rapidash, Pastel Veil, Hatterene, Healer, Magic Bounce, either of those two, Toxic Croak, Dry Skin, Poison's Touch, either one of those, Wormadon, okay, maybe not Overcoat, uh, but, you know, like I said, better than Anticipation, Wishcash, Oblivious, Hydration, all of these abilities are enormously more beneficial and better off than Anticipation. So how can we make it better? Well, I had an idea, and that is to make Anticipation work similar to Mimikyu's ability. Like, what if the Pokemon with Anticipation, because it's so alert, because it's so ready for that super effective hit, because it's so prepared to receive that super effective hit, it dodges it. It just automatically avoids the first super effective hit that tries to connect with the Pokemon. It acts like a it acts like Mimikyu's disguise in that the first hit is always going to be blocked no matter how powerful it is even if it's like a massive Dynamax move Mimikyu's disguise will just protect it just limp over and it it's it may suffer a tiny bit of damage but it's a trade off better to lose the disguise than lo than lose the pokemon so anticipation get out it's your free get out of jail free card that's what i'm saying it, it gives Anticipation, you know, a, a new purpose. It gives some of these Pokemon a new tool to use. It gives them something to use. Like, let's pretend Hattering. Let's just pretend you have a Hattering on the field and you want it to set up that, tr that Trick Room. But your opponent, knowing that you're trying to set up Trick Room, focuses you down like really 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 focuses you down with a super effective hit and tries to take you out in one shot well it's not going to get that one shot and even if the opponent's next move you know tries to take is strong is still strong enough to take you out you've got that focus sash you've got that safety sash as i like to call it to save you so that's what i want to try that's what i would love for anticipation to get in terms of a buff if you know just to make it more viable just to make it better no water veil the next water veil the next ability the po prevents the pokemon from getting a burn okay problem is most of the or, or not most all of the pokemon that are going to be preventing a burn are all water types the opponent's not gonna try and burn a water type. They're gonna do, they're gonna try to get rid of it with like a thun with like an electric attack or grass type attack. And if the and if you're trying to set up, they're not gonna try. They're not gonna use Will O Wisp. They're gonna they're like I said. They're gonna try to get rid of you as fast as they can. They're not gonna waste their time trying to set up a status condition. So what, how do we, how do we set, how do we make a uh, water veil decent? How do we make water veil good? What if, what if water veil acted like aqua ring, like just an automatic aqua ring every turn, regenerating your health because it's in, because your Pokemon is just coated with this veil of water. You're just covered with this veil of water, similar to Aqua Ring. You're coated in this in this water. What if it acted like that? Every turn, you re you regenerate just a tiny bit of health, similar to that of Aqua Ring. It would give so much more potential to some of these Pokemon, especially a Pokemon like Wailord, who do who wants who doesn't want to waste a turn regenerating, etc., and wants to set up as fast as possible. That would be a good use of Water Veil. That would be a very good ability for some of these slower, bulky, tankier Pokemon. Now, let's move on to Leaf Guard. 
Leaf Guard. What can I say about Leaf Guard that just doesn't scream suck? Leaf Guard prevents the bear from succumbing to major status ailments, sleeps, burns, poisons, paralysis, or freezing during sunny weather. Though it does not prevent confusion or infatuation, and it does not prevent you from going to sleep on your own terms. On paper, that sounds great. In practice, however, every single one of these Pokemon would die in the sun. Especially if the opponent brings a, move, a Pokemon that knows a fire type move. Like, I can understand the theory of preventing yourself from being burned, paralysis, poisoned, etc. Or being put to sleep. But if... I don't, if I get a nice tasty damage boost for my fire attack, I'm not interested in, bur in burning you or putting you to sleep. I just want to straight up put th send your Pokemon back to its ball in as painful a way as I want to. And that's what Leaf Guard essentially is. It's just saying there, please burn me with a flamethrower. So how can we make it better? How can we make it better? Now, mind you, this is all my opinion, so if you have a different opinion, by all means, tell me down below. I don't mind. I I would love to hear what you have to say. I personally think Leaf Guard and some of these other abilities are just absolutely horrible. But regardless, how can we make Leaf Guard better? Well, I had this idea. What if Leaf Guard, in exchange for that potential, you know extra damage you're going to take from an opponent's fire type moves because you're in the sunny in a sunny weather what if the power of leaf guard gave your pokemon a physical and special defense boost what if that is what it did like if you're going to go over like say let's bring out serena who normally runs queenly majesty suddenly serena with this leaf guard ability if, like, say it increased the physical and defensive stats by, like, say, 30 to 40 percent or even 50 percent, let's just, yeah, go up to 50 percent, make these grass types really bulky Pokemon in the sun. Suddenly, these grass type Pokemon are looking mighty strong, mighty dangerous, like they can take a ton of damage. Like, they don't fear fire types anymore for some reason, at least not as bad as it used to, as not as bad as they do right now. Because, you know, they're sitting in the sun. Suddenly, they look like they don't fear the fire types as, as much. I mean, they're still going to take damage. But it won't be as bad as, you know, they would be if they didn't have that 50% defensive boost. Now, that's only my opinion. Maybe you have other ideas. Let's talk about the next ability. This is the eh, niche kind of ability that... You know, I can't say anything too bad about it because it fulfills a purpose. It has an idea. It's good on paper and it's good in practice. It just sort of screams meh. What does Battle Armor do, Impy? Or TK, there we go. What does Battle Armor do, Rishi Ram? It prevents the Pokemon who has Battle Armor from receiving a critical hit. So they have permanent crit defenses all the time. That's actually okay. That's an average ability. I can, I, you know, I can, I can accept that. Problem is, that just forces me to beat the living snot out of you. And half the time, you know, outside of those lucky crits, I'm still going to beat the living snot out of you. I'm not going in praying for the lucky crit. I'm going in thinking, all right, I'm just going to beat the living snot out of you. And if I get a lucky crit, yay. If not, oh well, I'm still going to beat the living snot out of you. That's what I think when I when I when I have when I see an opponent with battle armor, or if I think an opponent may have battle armor. And there's only a few Pokemon that have battle armor, and the only Pokemon that know battle armor in this generation are Drapion, Type Null, Berserker, and Phalanx. And I don't have to fear battle on, armor on all but one of them. Like Berserker, most people want Steely Spirit to power up the power up those steel type moves they don't want battle armor phalanx they want defiant that's a much better ability they don't want the battle armor 
As for Drapion, I'm not sure if people have run Battle Armor, but most tend to run Sniper. They don't want Battle Armor on Drapion. People aren't going in wanting to protect themselves from critical hits. They're going in prepared to accept critical hits. And if they get the critical hit on themselves, oh well, that's Sarin CS, I guess. That's how it is. That's just how it is. They don't care about crits. They still, they still fear them. They'll still hate them. But they're not going in saying, I want to avoid all crits this game. No, they're going in there with other strats, with other abilities. They don't care about crits. They they just some people just don't care if they receive a crit or not. So what if instead we gave battle armor a defensive boost to like the physical and special defense stat? Not as good as the leaf guard, like I said. Not as good as what leaf guard I suggested would do, but like say a twenty percent boost or even or, or even a ten percent defense boost. These Pokemon are wearing battle armor. They have armor. It, they should get more, a more defense boost because of the armor. And not just protection against crits. That is all I'm... That's what I suggest. Like, say, a 10, you know, a 10% boost, maybe a 20% boost. Nothing, nothing too huge. Nothing too major. But just something to make them a bit bulkier. A bit more defensive make them just a little more stronger in that sense that is those are my ideas like i said those are my ideas anticipation let's go back to anticipation pokemon with anticipation instead of you know just shuddering and saying oh no the opponent has a super effective hit what am i gonna do instead says all right hit me with your super effective hit i'll dodge it first time without fear that's what that's what I that's what I would suggest for anticipation. A free get out of jail free card, similar to Mimikyu. Dodges the first super effective hit. It can't dodge the second one though. Water Veil acts like a like a permanent aqua ring for Pokemon. Gives Pokemon like Wailord, Mantine, other Pokemon a free healing ability every turn. Leaf Guard. It just sucks right now. Let's make it. Let's make it so that grass types are super strong, super defensive, be at the set at the cost of be, of being more flammable. That's what I suggest. Give them more defensive power with Leaf Guard active. Battle armor. Make them just a tiny bit bulkier on top of being protected from critical hits. Not as not as bulky as what Leaf Guard does. But, you know, maybe some just a small defensive boost. And I hope you guys all enjoyed this video. I hope you all, you know, g give me your ideas. Give me what, give me abilities that you think are useless and your ideas for how to make them just a little bit more viable. Make them more decent. I mean, some abilities just, let's, are, are, we're not just going to, we're just not going to bother with, like, say, hunt like honey get like get like honey collect or some or or gather honey or something like that you know it's it, it some abilities just are useless but some of them can be viable especially since some of the pokemon that are competitively strong competitively viable get them but what do you guys think give me your ideas give me your thoughts down below if you like the video like it if you want to share it hey uh, please, by all means, help me out. Support the channel as much as you want. And until next time, I am Fedora Rushing Ram. I'll see you all around. Peace!